from the Broadcast Center for Northern California, this is News Center 4 with Paul Ryan and Roberta Wong. Now, News Center 4. Good afternoon. The San Francisco Presidio and Letterman Army Hospital may be closed. The weekly newspaper, the Army Times, says the Carter administration wants to shut down both of those San Francisco military bases to save money. San Francisco's accused parking meter collectors were back in court today where they got somewhat of a surprise. The charges against them have been changed. 11 meter collectors are accused of stealing coins from the parking meters in the city, but these 11 and five others are accused as well of working less than a regular eight-hour day. Up to now, the charge for this has been embezzlement. But today, the district attorney's office changed the charge to theft. Today was the day the men were supposed to plead innocent or guilty, but due to this last-minute change, it's been postponed another week. The men were arrested in a surprise raid at City Hall. The DA said the parking meter department had been stealing half a million dollars a year in parking meter coins. Con well, old Ed Walking Stick isn't the only Berkeleyite that would like to see the sun come out. Your guest uh, is another. That's right, Paul. We're going to be talking to Tom Javits, who's the head of Integral House, and it's a house that's energized by solar energy and recycles its waste, and it's like living in the country in and the middle of the city. It, it is as well, located in Berkeley. And we'll have that interview in a few moments, and we'll have much more coming up on New Center 4. Stay with us. <laughs> The sun is out in some places around the Bay Area right now, but it's still sprinkling in others. Last night it rained very hard for a few hours, and our rain totals ranged from about a half inch in the South Bay to almost an inch in Marin. And scattered showers will continue throughout the day and tonight with clearing later on tomorrow. The winds will still be strong, blowing from the northwest 15 to 25 miles an hour. Today's highs will range from the upper 50s to low 60s, with lows tonight dropping to the chilly upper 30s inland to the upper 40s in downtown San Francisco. On today's community calendar, the public is invited to explore the relationship between diabetes and the emotions. That's tonight at 7 at Fort Mason in San Francisco. The session is sponsored by the ACOS Foundation. Call 664-1464, 664-1464 for the details. Michael Tilson Thomas conducts the San Francisco Symphony's performance tonight at 8. That's in the uh, Zellerbach Auditorium on the campus at UC Berkeley. Call 642-9988, 642-9988 for tickets. A heart specialist is a term usually used to describe a certain kind of doctor, but it can have a double meaning, as our man Jeff Simon discovered out in Four Country. And on that note, we will say that's our news for today. Thanks for watching. Roberta Wong and I will be back tomorrow. Please join us then. Have a good day. It's the Giants opening day, and we'll take a live look at the preparations at Candlestick Park, and we'll also watch the Mariposa come into San Francisco. President Carter says he will put off production of the neutron bomb, and we'll be talking to a financial expert about the Jarvis Gann Initiative. Those stories and more next on Eyewitness News. Old Kirk Douglas with Mike at four. Eyewitness News with Kai Maxwell, David Fowler, and the Channel 5 Eyewitness News Team. Good afternoon, I'm David Fowler. Wendy Takuda is sitting in for Kai Maxwell. Well, it's opening day at Candlestick Park. The Giants uh, leading off their home season with a series against the San Diego Padres. Our instant eye is at Candlestick Park right now for a glimpse of the pregame excitement. There you see it from the hill above Candlestick Park. A crowd of about 30,000 are expected for today's game. The count, John Montefusco, will be on the mound for San Francisco. Stolen. David? Police capture the Oklahoma Girl Scout killer and President Carter decides about the neutron bomb. Those stories and much more next as Eyewitness News at Noon continues. Coming up next, some talk about the Jarvis Gann Initiative as Eyewitness News at Noon continues. At 769.23. Wendy? 
The sun is supposed to keep shining this afternoon and on through Saturday. That's good news for the weekend. Today, the highs will range from 55 to 60 degrees, but it will be cool tonight with temperatures from the mid-30s into the mid-40s. Right now in San Francisco, it is 53 degrees in Oakland, 54. And in San Jose, 56. And at the Marin County Civic Center, it is 54 degrees. Now, the temperatures may be cool, but spring is here, and people are beginning to think about new fashions for the season. Look easy to get into. Well, that's Eyewitness News at noon. For Wendy Dakota and the entire Eyewitness News team, I'm David Fowler. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. KBIX Vice President and General Manager, George Reising, Jr. San Francisco's retirement. Elvis Presley is Kid Galahad, Monday on the 3.30 Star Performance. This is Channel 7 News Scene, the Bay Area's most complete television news service, with Jerry Jensen and Valerie Coleman, Pete Giddings with the weather, and Tom Janis with sports. Now for News Scene, Jerry Jensen. Good evening, yet one more accident for the Golden Gate Ferry Boat fleet this evening. This time, though, it caused a lot less damage uh, than some others did, but a lot of damage to a $4 million boat, one of the three they have, uh, the Sonoma. Here it is now. It was pulling into the Larkspear Pier at the end of a 6.30 run. Something went wrong. Uh, the boat rammed a piling. It bounced to a stop against the dock. A metal beam punched a hole in the hull of the Sonoma. A crew member was standing near where that metal come, came through. You can see it right there quite clearly. Luckily, he was not hurt. There's no word now if any of the passengers on board was hurt, but some of them are uh, pretty shaken up by that jolt. Just a few months ago, of course, the jet boat San Francisco slammed into the same pier. It was reversing the motors, and that didn't work. Uh, San Francisco was only dented, but there was a lot of damage to the Larkspur Pier. That damage was just being repaired when the Sonoma today slammed into the same general area. The last day of our last ocean liner in San Francisco, new safety rules for railroads. The world's oldest book is sold and more celebrities on the sick list and what Bucky Fuller would like to do to Minneapolis. Those stories next on You Scene. But it would be utterly impractical. Perhaps uh, that's why Bucky Fuller is called the Leonardo da Vinci of our time. Colorado has very strange weather, and Pete's here to tell us about it. Summer in the daytime and winter at night. Pete Giddings and the weather is next. Pete Giddings says it's a very strange day, but an even stranger night. Cold. Unreal. Let's very start cold. out with here at home, and then we'll go across the country. If you are in one of the protected valleys and are in agricultural business and or have tender vegetation that would not like to be frostbitten tonight, please take precautions. Even though the small craft sign is up, we have every expectation to hit freezing and or colder at ground level, and frost is expected in those wind-protected areas. Okay, the warning is out. East coast of the United States started out warm to cool. The warm was in the south, the cool was in the north. But as you start going uh, over toward the west, you start getting cold, like 10 at uh, Dillon, Montana. You also start getting the warmest it has ever been in history in some spots, like in New Orleans, 86 degrees, 95 for the highest in the country today, Carlsbad, New Mexico, 89 in Amarillo, Texas. But Colorado is getting every kind of weather you can imagine. Now, yesterday I told you about travelers advisories and stockman's advisories that were posted. Today they have put up for Arizona above 5,000 feet a winter storm warning, for Colorado a heavy snow warning, mighty cold weather coming in. Jet stream is helping too. The cold air coming around the low pressure systems comes in from the north, and the jet stream is going up and then dropping straight down. So you get it from both ways. Monstrous high pressure system in the Pacific, not going to forgive anybody that thinks that spring is sprung and summer's around the corner. What's going to happen is, as the cold front passes through, we get clearing of all the atmospheric problems. You can actually see how the physical changes in the weather took place over the week. Originally, the jet stream was practically coming right out of the Pacific. There was a little bit of a bubble in it, but it still came almost due west to east. Later on in the week, the highs started building in here, both at the surface and the upper atmosphere. And you can see how on Wednesday, storms were traveling across the country, but all of a sudden the storm started making a loop, going a little higher toward the Aleutians. Yesterday, there was a definite break in the central part of this storm as the jet started to take it up right here and bring it up around 
to British Columbia and then back down. Now today you'll get an even better illustration as this part of the storm continues to move up and there it is. You can actually see how the jet stream goes up, comes down and then swings around. This area, high pressure, is going to be with us it looks like through Monday and a warming trend will start tomorrow afternoon. So while you look at these temperatures, put about four to six more degrees on them for Sunday and again on Monday, but Monday night looks like showers might start for Tuesday because it'll get increasingly cloudy. Got all of that? The forecast, it's a go do a weekend, fair and warmer. If you go to the mountains, take your long johns. If you have tender vegetation, cover it up, sir. Boy, do I ever. In fact, those daytime temperatures don't look bad, but the first night of frost tonight, huh? Frost, and some of it will probably be rather heavy. So it's now, what, what is the frost season roughly from now until mid-May or so? This has not changed. That was John Montefusco, and as I mentioned, he should not miss his next turn. 105 game time tomorrow, the Giants and the Padres. Elsewhere in the National League, the Giants still chasing as they were last year. The Cincinnati Reds getting a three-run homer from George Foster to beat Houston 5-4. to four. The Dodgers won Lopes and Monday with three-run homers over Atlanta. The Cards beat the Phillies 5-1. John Candelaria beat the Cubs. And Jerry Kuzman started a season opener for the first time in his 11-year career beating Montreal. The Masters Golf Tournament lead Trevino and San Jose's Rod Funseth share the second-round lead with five under one 39s. In basketball, of course, well, the times are changing, and so are we, in fact. Have a nice weekend for Van Amberg and the entire New Scene staff. I'm Jerry Jensen. Good night. Next on Eyewitness News, angry transit workers take to the streets of New York. Roseanne Scamardella has a late report. Doug Johnson takes a close look tonight at the intensified battle against street crime. Spencer Christian with wet weather and Warner Wolf with a beanball day for the New York Mets and Rangers playoff highlights next. WABC-TV, New York. The mood was very angry tonight as New York transit workers took to the streets. And these workers say they don't want the new tentative contract. This is Eyewitness News with Larry Kane and the Eyewitness News team. Mail voting continues throughout the New York area tonight and this evening's big story on Eyewitness News. The mail write-in vote for the tentative contract agreement that averted a subway and bus strike in New York several weeks ago. But tonight, a vocal group of transit workers demonstrated on the streets. They say no way. And Roseanne Scamardello visited with them tonight. Roseanne? Larry, the pickets were not demanding a strike. What do they want? New negotiations and perhaps a new union leadership. We don't want it. No, no. Pickett told me, we stand by the majority. Larry? Roseanne, along those same lines, contract talks between the city of New York and the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association were supposed to resume first thing tomorrow morning, but the city has canceled them, delayed them for at least a week's time. Apparently, the Koch administration wants to wait a week to see the outcome of the transit workers' ratification vote. The murder of two New York City police officers about 10 days ago may change the minds of many state lawmakers about the feasibility of the death penalty. Key jobs. When the Eyewitness News team returns to you tonight, the Attorney General of New York goes after the Medicaid boycott. Melinda Nix will have a report. And Doug Johnson looks at the anti-crime units, exactly what they're out to do for New York City as Eyewitness News continues. There are 43 radio stations in New York. We're the one that plays only the hits. Five hundred and thirty-four recently rehired New York City police officers have been assigned to the Anti-Crime Streets Division effective next Monday, and Doug Johnson took a look on the streets tonight to see how their presence might be felt. As I was saying moments ago, Warner Wolf, the uh, big W is next for the sports. A story about the Mets, a controversial one, and of course the big story tonight, hockey. Warner? All right, it's not a good story. The Rangers lose to the Sabres 4-1, to one, and that means the Rangers either win two in a row or they are eliminated from the Stanley Cup. Elsewhere, Philadelphia and Colorado are still 2-2 in the third period. Detroit has beaten Atlanta 5-3, and Toronto beat Los Angeles 7-3. Center George Ferguson had the hat trick for Toronto. All right, let's go to the Rangers-Sabres videotape. Rangers in the visiting dark blue, the Sabres in the home white. And I think here is a great example of why videotape replay does not always show what appears to be. This looks like a goal by Rick Sealing, right? Right. Absolutely. Even the replay looks like a goal. This is why officials can't rely on replay. Look at this. Looks like a sure goal, but it's in back of the net. That's oh. no goal. Here's the goal, which really iced it. It was two to one, 11 and a half minutes left, 45 footer by John The druggist are boycotting because of slow payments and other bureaucratic red tape. And tonight, New York State Attorney General Louis Lefkowitz has entered the case in an effort to stop the boycott. And Melinda Nix reports. Melinda? 
That's right, Larry. The state attorney general has obtained a restraining order, and it's intended to end the boycott of the Medicaid program by the 800 drug stores that belong to New York's Empire City Pharmaceutical Society. For people whose lives depend on that subsidized medicine, the situation has become quite critical. Okay, Melinda, we hope they solve that problem. And right now, Spencer Christian is trying to solve our weather problem. What happened to your forecast, by the way, Spencer? We've hey, been all okay. waiting for all right, all right, I'll explain that when I get to the map. What's wrong now? Don't make the playoffs, right? You know, everybody's complaining about the weather. Everyone's so down because it's spring already and it hasn't turned warm yet. Look, don't feel so depressed. Read a good book. Uh, smile to your neighbor. Go out and exercise. Get in shape. Kiss your spouse or your lover or kiss both of them. Anyhow, um, we had a messy day today. Uh, well, sometimes the two are mutually exclusive. We had a messy day today, as you know by now. Some rain came in late in the day. We had clouds. The high got up to only 52. The overnight low is 46. Right now, though, the rain is ending. Skies are still cloudy, but they will be clearing very shortly. Temperature 43 degrees, relative humidity 82 percent, barometer reading 29.74 and rising. Winds out of the northwest at 13 miles per hour. Okay, so why did we blow the forecast? We said it would be warmer today than it was. There was a warm front intersecting this cold front, which pushed through the area today. It stalled just south of us. Had it moved a bit farther to the north, we would have had warmer weather than we had today. But it stalled around Trenton. And, of course, we had cool weather, raw, in fact, but south of us. The high temperature today in Washington got up to 85, in Richmond got up to 89. So all the warm weather was just south of us. We missed it. We had some rain as the cold front pushed through, but now the rain is ending. We've got some breezy weather coming down out of the northwest, some nice uh, clear skies, but some cool air. And I'll be back in just a moment to tell you more about that and complete details on the five-day forecast. Here's our forecast for the, uh, well, for tonight. Let's start there. Clearing. Becoming windy, low between 40 and 43. Winds will be northwesterly at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow, we'll have mostly sunny skies, windier than tonight. But the high will be higher than today. It'll be warm, high near 70. Then tomorrow night, we'll have... Uh, Oh, partly cloudy, breezy conditions, low between 45 and 50, a mild night. The next three days look like this. On Thursday, chance of some <laughs> rain. Friday and Saturday, mostly sunny, high around 60. That's Warner Wolf there jumping up behind the desk. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, it'll be sunny. Temperature 47 degrees, winds out of the northwest. So many fans. So many fans. Spencer has any more comments about wives and lovers, he'll repeat them tomorrow night. Right now for the Eyewitness News team, I'm Larry King. Good night and thanks for being with us. This has been a presentation of WABC TV News. Touch Premium Channel P4. America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts, as... Cosmo Topper. Christmas Eve is rather late to be buying a tree, isn't it, Topper? Now, he can't honestly be admiring those limbs, can he? Oh, I see. Well, it takes all kinds of limbs to make a world, and Marion Kirby's are definitely out of this world. She's a ghost. That's her husband, George. They were killed in a skiing accident and came back to haunt Topper. Topper's the only one who can see and hear them and their dog. 
Peel is a drinking dog. He prefers his collar on a glass of beer. <laughs> oh, my feet are killing me. Well, I, uh, 